Open your ears and lube up your butthole. It's time for the What Do We Call It podcast. Now, here's your host, it's J-Man. Welcome to the What Do We Call It podcast. I'm J-Man. And I'm number one fan, Tim. When I say white supremacy, what do you think? What kind uh, of images does it bring about in your head? Uh, KKK and, honestly, Nazis. That's, Nazis. What, that's what comes to mind. The Nazis. If you were to select a celebrity, not that is a white supremacist, but do you think the white supremacist would latch on to? Who do you think it would be? Ooh, good question. Um, just pick somebody. I Even if you're just off the wall, I don't care. Just name a name. Uh, Governor Dayton. <laughs> I don't you, know. You think he looks like an old Nazi SS officer? Sure. Well, let me tell you something that will blow your mind. Every demographic chooses a pop icon. Mm-hmm. Gay men, they worship, share. You would think they would have picked Elton John not to get off subject. It could be. They also love Madonna. If we're being honest. She's like the worst example. Black women, they love Beyonce. Neo-Nazis worship Taylor Swift. What? Taylor Swift is a skinny, blonde Pennsylvania girl that they've labeled an Aryan goddess. Taylor Swift. Isn't she the one that... uh... Yeah, isn't she that country singer's daughter? No. No? Okay, who the hell am I thinking of then? I, seriously, Taylor's, you're struggling to picture Taylor Swift? Yeah, I am. I'm not that, that in the pop culture. Man, you got to get out more. I like being in my little cave. Well, she is. She's like this blonde-haired, blue-eyed, skinny little milk-white bitch. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> who uh, <laughs> who uh, is very conservative in her morals. She's not very political. But, uh... Nazis and members of the alt-right, so like white supremacists, have been spreading a conspiracy theory that Taylor Swift is a covert Nazi. Well, yeah, because if uh, that's all they have to grab onto. Well, they're claiming that her songs have red-pilled America into believing uh, in a conservative racist agenda. And This I'm is thinking, coming from the left? This I don't know. Because that's what it sounds like. It could be. Like, all they have is... Oh, well, the Nazis think she's a goddess, so therefore she's a Nazi. Well, I just think it's hilarious that of all the people they could have latched on to, they latched on to Taylor Swift, who's just boring and, like, ultra goody-goody. Yeah, she's like I mean, a rebelling teenage girl still, and she's 25 or 6 now. I would honestly think, you know, and I know I know he's not like this, but uh, you'd think they'd pick somebody like Ted Nugent, who's into guns and hunting and all that shit like nah, that. he's too lowbrow for them. Well, like, but, you you know, somebody with an image like that. I don't see Taylor Swift having an image even close to that as far as hobbies and all that shit. I don't know. Um, here's a quote. Taylor Swift is a pure Aryan goddess, like something out of a classical Greek poetry, Athena reborn. That's the most important thing. It's also an established fact that Taylor Swift is secretly a Nazi and is simply waiting for the time when Donald Trump makes it safe for her to come out and announce her Aryan agenda to the world. What? Probably she'll be betrothed to Trump's son, and they'll be crowned American royalty. This sounds like crazy conspiracy theorist finger-pointing from the left. I don't know if this guy, what kind of drug this guy's doing, but it uh, sounds pretty strong. Well, it started a few years ago where somebody, some girl took a picture of Swift and attributed a quote to it that was a Hitler quote. Oh, yeah, because you have to believe everything you see on the internet, right? And from there, other people started making these memes. And then it just blew up? I don't know why. So, you know, I mean, former Breitbart columnist Milo Yiannopoulos, you know who he is? Mm -hmm. Yes. He's quite a firebrand. He believes the memes originated with a Pinterest user named At Poop Cutie. At Poop Cutie? At Poop Cutie. Uh which was helmed by a teenage girl named Emily Pattinson. In 2013, she started pinning memes attributing Hitler quotes to Swift to spoof memes that falsely attributed inspiring quotes to Marilyn Monroe. She emblazoned an image of Swift in a ball gown walking past trees with the Hitler quote 
As in everything, nature is the best instruction. It's kind of ambiguous. People might not pick up on it. Yeah, it doesn't sound like something I've heard. I I don't know, I'm not super, super familiar with Nazi quotes, but it well, sounds like something anybody could say. Her lawyer latched onto that and threatened her, this girl. So he, he put this to her about the memes. The association of Miss Swift with Adolf Hitler undisputedly is harmful, abusive, ethnically offensive, humiliating to other people, libelous, and no doubt otherwise objectionable. It is of no import that Miss Swift may be a public figure or that Pinterest conveniently now argues that the offending material is mere satire or parody. Public figures have rights, and there are certain historical figures, such as Adolf Hitler, Charles Manson, and the like, who are universally identified in case law and pop culture as lightning rods for emotional and negative reaction. Mm, yeah, that's... Is this a conspiracy just to take her down? Like, somebody doesn't like her, so they're like, oh, I'm just going to make her look like a Nazi and she'll go down in flames. I guess I see it because, I mean, there's other pop culture white girls they could pick, but, like, Miley Cyrus is kind of whorish or was for Miley a while. Cyrus, that's the girl I was talking about. Yeah. And uh, and then you got, like, Katy Perry, but she hangs out with black dudes. Katy Perry. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah, okay. D- don't worry about it. She won't be around in a few years. <laughs> I don't think any of them will be. So all of what I just told you, that's the warm-up to this article that was written. Uh, Pop Front editor Megan Herning wrote a, t- a post titled, Swiftly to the Alt-Right, Taylor Subtly Gets the Lowercase KKK in Formation. This post is like a mix of political speech and critical commentary and discusses the resurgence of white supremacy in America and how these people are embracing T-Swift. And then it provides a critical interpretation of some of her music and lyrics and videos. And then the post ends by calling on Swift to personally denounce white supremacy, saying, silence in the face of injustice means support for the oppressor. Taylor didn't answer no. back. Yeah, no. it's And they're, they're saying if she doesn't say anything, then yeah, then she fully supports it, right? That's they basically the of it. painted her into a corner and said, complicity is the same thing as acceptance. Which it's not. It's just, why give these people attention? It only validates what they're saying. It, not even like, oh, they're right, you know, like they're right about her being a KKK member. It's just, it gives their voice, it gives them a reason to keep talking, I guess. Yeah. Like, oh, she responded. Well, I'll just keep doing this because I'm changing things. Ah, uh, but you're not. You're, you're really not. just annoying people and wasting time and money, so she's got to draft statements. It's fucking ridiculous. What they do is keep lawyers in business. Pretty much. So she writes that, connecting all these dots, and then saying, Taylor, you need to tell these people that you're not their spokesperson. And because she's not a very political figure, she hasn't said shit. Because she's not going to buy into the baiting. And then this happens. Her lawyer threatens legal action against this this blogger. Okay. Who immediately turns around and says, you're trying to stifle my First Amendment rights. And then contacts the ACLU, who then gets behind the blogger and shuts Taylor Swift's lawyer the fuck down and says, you're trying to intimidate this person and suppress free speech with your legal authority. And just because your client doesn't want to be associated with this doesn't mean that this person can't write whatever they want. It doesn't mean that that she's associated with the white supremacists. It's an interesting back and forth. I mean, you see this pattern of people connecting Taylor Swift to white supremacists, and then people point it out, and then her lawyer threatens them, but she doesn't outright say, I'm not a part of this. So playing devil's advocate, I'm like, hmm, I wonder if she wants to shut this down, but at the same time, the reason she's not denouncing it is because she partially believes in it. Maybe, maybe not. You'd have to get her to admit something like that. Well, the ACLU accused her lawyer of utilizing threats of legal action as an intimidation tactic to silence this lady. Isn't there a difference between freedom of speech and slander of a character, which basically what this blogger is doing? Yeah, I read that article and I wasn't going to subject anybody. If you want to go find it, it's findpopfront.com. Or you could just look up the title of that article. Swiftly to the alt-right, Taylor subtly gets the lowercase KKK information. Read that shit. It's fucking crazy. It's like somebody got way too stoned and sat there with a bunch of pictures and printouts of lyrics 
and had yarn and thumbtacks. Or maybe started <laughs> making Venn diagrams and just got way too carried away. You know, if you look for a pattern, you'll find a pattern, even if it's not there. Yeah, well, the ACLU requested a response from Swift and her attorney by November 13th, confirming they'll not pursue a lawsuit. And as of the 16th, they have not yet answered. Do you think that she has the right to defend her good name with people linking her to this, which she has reluctantly been attached to? Like, it was the no doing of her own. She's not out there like, if I know enough of her songs for my kids listening to her music and paying attention to her since her career broke years ago. Mm-hmm. She's not singing about white supremacy, and I don't know how these motherfuckers are... They are reaching. Careful you don't pull your shoulder out of socket reaching on that to call her your Aryan goddess and say she's got some hidden agenda. Well, yeah, and like, like I said earlier, that's that's all these people have. You know, people are constantly looking for Nazis, out there calling everybody a Nazi, out there calling everybody a racist, out there calling everybody a misogynist. Uh, all they have... Is Strauss to grasp at. And it gets worse yeah. and worse every year because people aren't paying attention anymore. Because it's, okay, yeah, 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 I'm white. So automatically I'm a racist, right? Yeah, fuck you. You know, that's like somebody from Germany being called a Nazi simply because they're from Germany. Right. I mean, just give me a break. Well, how many black friends do you have? Like two. Like two? I'm not sure if the one's really a friend or more of an associate, but we play air stuff together. Okay. That's that's at least an acquaintance. Yeah. Well, I love playing airside with him. He's awesome. I give friendship four levels. Uh, a familiar, an acquaintance, a friend, and a good friend. Okay, well, I have an acquaintance and a friend. Yeah. So, Whereas I have a friend who used to work with me. Hmm. But it's I don't really get out much anymore, so it's not like I'm like, hey, black people, I need to diversify my friendship pool. Yeah, are we racist because we don't have more than one or two black friends? Why well, work with almost exclusively white people? So do I. <laughs> and, and if we lived in a different city and worked for different organizations, it could be that we're surrounded by black people and have mostly black friends. And it's just a matter of where you live and who's around you and the fact that people fail to want to recognize that people stick with their own. Yeah. I mean, it's, black I, people may feel uncomfortable with white people, so they look for the only other black people around them. White people are... Basically, for years, has been the the dominant population segment. And so you've got minorities clumping together and leaving big pockets of white people all around only white people. And if you got somebody at work, that's where you meet. Or you got somebody you might bowl with or play in like an AAU basketball league. You go off and you meet somebody. It depends on where you go. So it stands to reason that people that live in mostly white areas and work in mostly white jobs would know mostly white people. But that doesn't mean we're Nazis or we're white supremacists. That's fucking no, ridiculous. it doesn't mean anything. All it means is that, yeah, it's like you said, the area we live, the areas we work. Right. So just because Taylor Swift isn't, like, cutting singles with guest spots from multi-raced people... Just because she doesn't do a song with Beyonce, because that's not her genre. Or she doesn't do a song with Rita Ora. Yeah. Or Shakira. And because she's not, like, out there hugging black babies on the Today Show. There, People are going to be like, well, clearly she knows to stick with her own. She knows what's important. This is my white supremacist voice. They're pretty much all from the South. Yeah. But they're not. They took our jobs! Do you think it's bullshit that the lawyer's threatening to sue over defamation, or do you think it's okay? Uh, I think it's okay, but again, it's a tricky spot because you got the screaming, it's a violation of my First Amendment right. But again, difference between slander and free speech. Free speech to voice your dislike of something, a group of people, or whatever, you know, that's fine. But when you start attacking somebody personally, I don't think that really falls under free speech. I mean, there's been a lot of argument about that, but it even then, well, you could say that Taylor Swift and her lawyer are using their free speech against these people who are, def- you know... They're uh, defaming her, basically. Defaming her, yeah. They're associating her with something that has a negative connotation that could also possibly affect her record sales and profitability. But she's not the only person that is suffering from a connection to neo-Nazis. Who else is? Recently, there was a quarterly finance meeting... Of Papa John's Incorporated. 
-hmm. Their profits were down. I don't know what percentage, but in the span of a few days, I think he lost like $72 million in stock worth. Ouch. So, I mean, first off, here's how I feel about the stock market. It's invisible money. Yeah. It's not like a bank where you put in $50,000 and you can always get out back your $50,000 plus interest. The stock market is a gamble. It's the most high stakes gamble because there's so many different independent variables that could fuck you out of the value of your money. You're just, you're betting on things and and it's not, there's very few tangible things that you can say you're investing in. You investing in tech stock. I'm buying stock in a company. Well, they're not like fucking giving you direct commerce. They're not providing you with a service. You're buying an interest in the company hoping that your money will give them the financial backing to achieve their goal so they may profit and then there'll be a trickle down of their profit to you as a shareholder. Yeah. It's invisible money. So he loses that kind of money and he instantly blames the NFL, saying these fucking protests, all these dudes taking a knee and you're not addressing it. And Papa John's is the official pizza of the NFL. (laughs) And he blames that loss on the NFL not properly handling this protest bullshit. Uh, grasping at straws. Kind of. Kind of. I mean, you, when you don't have any answers, you kind of look for something that seems reasonable. I suppose you could say that, but I don't think just because people are mad at NFL players for protesting, they're buying less pizza. Yeah, I have to say that it has very little effect on what pizza somebody would eat. Maybe people just realize that your pizza suck. Or somebody else revamped their menu and it's better than yours. Chanticleer. I doubt Chanticleer is a nationwide franchise It like is not, that. but it's better. You know, like the, the re-rise of the once fallen Little Caesars. It was everywhere, then it was nowhere, and yeah, now holy shit, it's everywhere fighting. and then some again. So that being said, Because Papa John's stood up to the NFL, which is a very, very black entity, guess who decided that Papa John's was their official pizza? The KKK. The white supremacist said, Papa John's is now the official pizza. So Papa John's is pathetic because they think the NFL is the reason why they're not getting pizza. And the KKK is pathetic because they think Papa John's is their guy. Since when does the hate group need an official pizza? I just think it's hilarious that they're latching on to any cause to feel like in a climate where they're clearly not wanted or appreciated except for by themselves Mm -hmm. nobody's like you know they've really changed my mind about white supremacy they've really cleaned up their image and opened my eyes to what's going on with the mud people i gotta get on board with them honey grab our pillowcases and a scissors we're gonna cut some eye holes and go for a drive they like the same pizza i like i can relate So Papa John's is like, fuck you, don't you associate me with white supremacy? And I saw a graphic (laughs) on this story about it where it's a Klan member, Mm -hmm. and uh, next to him it's got the Papa John's logo, (laughs) and their slogan is, better ingredients, better pizza. And it said, whiter ingredients, whiter pizza. (laughs) And then there was another graphic of a pizza with a Papa John's logo in the corner, and somebody had arranged pepperoni slices into a swastika. (laughs) Nice. So that's... That's really the overarching theme. It's not just about Taylor Swift or about Papa John's. It's about the alt-right and the white supremacists that are like latching on to major causes and people looking for pieces of pop culture to define them. And I wonder if it's more, well, I don't know if defining, but maybe it's so they can stay relevant in their mind. Well, yeah. Charlottesville really fucking damage their image there that white supremacist rally with all the torch bearing mm-hmm. yeah. nazis that you know didn't have the wherewithal to sport a mask to hide their face and then were crying about having their information leaked to the internet they got doxxed and many of them lost their jobs no and that's fine i mean if you're gonna be a piece of shit like that i mean well there was one guy that got doxxed and pointed to be a white supremacist, and it turns out he was just a photographer there covering the rally to freelance to sell photos of it. So he's like, I'm not a fucking white supremacist. I was there to cover this goddamn thing sure, as a sure. as a lower-tier member of the press. 
Right, there's going to be skepticism, but I mean, think about that. They're putting, they're out there with their torches, and and this is where people might look at me funny. Trump said, "You have the right to say whatever you want." On the left, they should also have the right to say whatever they want on the opposite side of the aisle. You don't believe in their cause, but free speech protects them. And I agree with him. I do, too. I heard him say that. They have a shitty message, and this is so many months ago, and I haven't really talked about it on the air yet, I don't think. They have a shitty message, and I no way support the idealism of white supremacy. Ditto. I will agree that it seems like it's a very inconvenient time to be white and male in America because they've declared open season on us for simply being white and male. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And to that, I would say uh, the generations that have oppressed you are older. It's not like the millennials. So suffer not the son for the sins of the father. I like Mm -hmm. that quote. I don't know who fucking said it. I don't know where I got it from. But I connected the dots on it while watching a movie once, and I don't know why. But if you want the right to say whatever you want, you have to give them the right to say whatever they want, or else that's not free speech. That's fascism. You're, you've got the Antifas, the anti-fascism crowd. Mm-hmm. And they're the ones that are they're, barking the loudest about it. You and, can't say that. It's hate speech. And then they go out there with fucking masks and baseball bats and crowbars and knives to stab and beat up people. Shut up with your white supremacy. You can't say that. Well, the, yeah. You're fascists, and we're going to fight your fascism with fascism. Fucking well, ridiculous. Because none of them actually read the definition of fascism, so. so. I think it's really silly, but I also think it's hilarious, but unfortunate for both Taylor Swift and Papa John's. And I'm curious to see where they're going to go next. Are they going to pick a specific NASCAR driver? Are they going to pick like a baseball player? Dairy Queen, because ice cream is white. Well, not all ice cream is white. Well, the majority of it. However, if you look at the Dairy Queen logo, I think the ice cream in their logo is white. So they could say, there's a hidden message that they support white supremacy. Don't you know Dairy Queen is not down with the brown? (laughs) Yeah. And, well, it's funny because you would think that the left or the Antifas would then, being cocky and tongue-in-cheek, select a cause also. Mm -hmm. Like Louisville Slugger (laughs) or a certain brand. Like Exo, I think, is a, is a brand of balaclavas. Or you could, you know, say, we're going to buy stock in bandanas to hide our faces. Motherfucker, this brand of bandana is the bandana. The official bandana of Antifa. Yeah. <laughs> but it just goes to show you how crazy the uh, the climate of American socio-political nonsense is these days. That they're looking at pop culture people to represent them who want nothing to do with them and are afraid to even say anything because they don't want to get involved. So then it turns into this giant side tangent that snowballs into articles and stupid theories and lawsuits, and then the ACLU gets involved. Basically, I still believe that it's somebody unhappy with their life trying to make everyone else miserable like them, because misery loves company. Yeah, white supremacy is fucking stupid. And my closing thought will be this. The reason that things are so terrible right now with this massive chasm between the left and the right, especially in our country with the constant harping of the the race issue. Everybody's getting so mad. If you don't like America, why don't you get out? When you get mad at prejudice and racism, when you fight back their vitriol with more vitriol, it's just that eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. Mm -hmm. You're buying into their shit. You're doing exactly what they want you to do. They're trying to get a reaction out of you, hope that you're going to do something to them that makes them look better than you so that they'll get more people to side with them and start re-recruiting higher numbers. And the best thing you can do with racism is laugh at it. Not that it's a funny thing. I'm not like saying laugh at all the racist jokes you want. Don't get mad. Mm -hmm. But don't just start frothing at the mouth with anger and screaming at people. What you have to do is laugh at the absurdity of it all, that anyone's better than anyone when we're all clearly idiotic pieces of shit. I mean, we can't even see that we're poisoning our own planet and reproducing it numbers that it can't sustain us and wasting all of our time staring into little computer devices in our hands all day and we don't know how to communicate anymore. And it's just me, 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 I, 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 and nobody really takes care of anybody. There's no strong sense of community amongst the human race. 
Yeah, I agree. Like they could change the word race on the census to skin color or cultural affiliation. Black, it's a skin color. I don't really consider it a race. No, it's not. There's one race. It's the human race. Exactly. So these fucking idiots, you can flip out, but honestly, you just laugh at them. And what's what's going to happen if you laugh at white supremacists? They get angry. They get angry. They get really angry. And then you sit back and laugh at them, shit in their pants over you not taking them seriously. And it reminds me of a quote from an episode of Metalocalypse, where the band is sitting around a table talking to one of their clocketeers, one of their employees, and they're giving like employee reviews or something, and murder face their bassist. You probably have not seen this show. I have not, no. Murder face, he sounds like this. He talks like this. Oh, okay. And he's like, you see how he's mad and I'm not? That's called being a dick. <laughs> and that's exactly what you got to do with racism and white supremacy. Laugh at them and say, bro, you are fucking ridiculous. This is stupid. I forget where there was a rally. I think it was down in Florida recently mm-hmm. where some... Uh, super poster boy for white supremacy was given a talk at some college or something. And there's this one white supremacist and he is fucking surrounded by black dudes. If you were a white supremacist, would you want to be standing in a crowd of a hundred plus black dudes? No. Would you feel safe? You think? No, I would be very, very quiet. And some are screaming and some are holding weapons and some are holding their phones. And one dude walks up to this white supremacist, black dude and goes, bro, why don't you like me, man? I ain't done nothing to you. Why Why do you, why you just automatically hate me? And the white supremacist just stands there with his hands down staring at him. You would think that it's like a show of I'm not going to buy into your bullshit. Clearly, he's trying to put on a poker face and he's pooping his pants. Yeah. So the black dude's like, come here, man. And then he fucking hugs the white supremacist. The, I, I saw video clips of that. And the white supremacist kind of has this weird smile on his face. You just defeated hate with love. You didn't get angry and fight fire with fire because fire doesn't put out fire. No, it doesn't. It makes more fire. Water does. So this is what I'm saying is you don't buy into this idiocy and just keep fucking pointing fingers and screaming at each other. And damn sure don't be putting on masks and going to beat people up for the sake of silencing them. Just don't fucking show up. If nobody goes to a white supremacy rally, then nobody cares. And they're going to go, where the fuck are all our supporters? Where yeah. are all the people that are supposed to be here with us? Lighting lowercase letter T's on fire on lawns and shit and putting on sheets and zig heiling and marching with our stupid regalia and armbands. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You, fuck you, white supremacists. You're idiots. And more people, I hope, will soon open their eyes to that mindset that we're going to laugh at you because we can't take you seriously because you're just so fucking stupid. Exactly. Interact with the show on Twitter at what do we call it? That is at what do we call it? You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash group slash what do we call it podcast show. For the what do we call it podcast, I'm J-Man. And I'm number one fan, Tim. And that's the end. Wow, you were a dick. Yeah, you got it down to a science. You notice how I'm not mad. He gets mad. That's being a dick.